Well, first, I want to say that environmental performance is a core principle of our company. It's very important in everything we, we do, and it's something that all of uh, our employees here at NanoCorp share. And I think the other thing that is a great advantage of a project at this stage of development is that we're at the point where we can still make some very good decisions uh, to give the best economic returns for the project as well as the best environmental returns. In particular, we focus a lot on the permitting of the project. And in our case, we've made a decision here to take out uh, this waterline concept to the Missouri River and replace it with some on-site infrastructure uh, around water treatment and creating a solid salt product. And the advantage there is that uh, by removing those aspects of the project related to the waterline, we don't have any more uh, federal permits to obtain for the project. Now, federal permitting is something we believe that we could make through and that we could, we could obtain. But if you look at the current situation in Nebraska, where we have a situation where there's been some tremendous flooding and people are in the process now of trying to recover and rebuild from those floods, uh, all of that activity is going to require uh, permits from the Army Corps of Engineers, which also happens to be the permits that we would require if we were to go ahead with the waterline idea. And right now, I would suspect that the Army Corps of Engineers is very busy trying to get all of this emergency permitting done. And I would also say that they're probably putting some of their regular work to the side. This is an example of a permitting situation where they're doing something very important. But if we were in that permitting process, we would be suffering a little bit on timelines. So I'm very happy to say that at this point, we've designed a project that's not going to require any additional federal permitting of, of a substantive nature. And that's really going to help us in terms of schedule. It's also going to help us de-risk the project. We were very excited when Nordman came to us and brought the idea of artificial ground freezing to us. And what's really interesting about artificial ground freezing is it's a complete philosophical change from how we thought about the project previously to how we, we think about it today. By freezing the ground, you're really keeping all of the water subsurface in the deep bedrock in the formation, as opposed to bringing it all into a series of dewatering wells and then having to deal with it. That has advantages on the operational side, but it also has some significant environmental advantages. Water that isn't pumped to the surface doesn't need to be treated, uh, doesn't create waste products, doesn't consume energy. So we're very excited about this prospect, uh, not only in the fact that it, it improves our environmental performance, uh, but it also presents a, a lower risk of doing something <clears throat> where we're drawing on groundwater resources that could be used for other purposes. Capital costs have increased since our previous study in 2017, and there are some good reasons uh, why they have increased. First and foremost, we made the decision to treat the water that we're going to pump from the underground in a water treatment plant. We're going to take that all the way to a solid salt product. That requires us to put more capital equipment into our water treatment system, and it'll cost a little bit more to operate as well. Along with that, the costs for most of the things that we would use to build the facility, the costs of construction uh, materials, the, the costs of the people to uh, build the facility, those have gone up in the last two years as well. We really don't have a lot of control over those cost increases. Finally, I think it's fair to say we've taken a different philosophical approach to the mine. <clears throat> we've decided to sink shafts deeper into the ground than under our previous plan. We've decided to take our ventilation shaft, which is one of the two shafts that we would sink, and equip it and make it more capable in terms of supporting operations. And what this does uh, is it requires us uh, to spend a bit more money on those shafts and to freeze the ground around the shafts to facilitate the sinking process. Now the benefits that we get out of this are that we get down to a much better part of the ore body to start off in the initial operations. And that's really going to help us on the financing side of things because we're able to de 
to demonstrate to the people that are looking us at us for financing purposes that we're going to be generating more revenue earlier in the mines operation and that's going to help us out quite a bit. OPEX is increasing as, as well as CAPEX in the, this current study that we've just announced and there's really a few things that are driving those increases. Uh, one of the main things is that uh, some of the consumables that we're going to use in the plant, for instance, aluminum and iron are two big consumables that we use. Those are more expensive today than they were a couple of years ago. Additionally, we've made the decision, uh, and, and it's good for environmental purposes, to treat the water that's coming out of the mine all the way to a solid salt product. Uh, that's a more energy intensive water treatment operation that we had before, and it's going to cost us more money to operate that. Uh, finally, we made a strategic decision around how we were going to operate the underground mine. In our previous study, we assumed that we would uh, manage all of that activity in-house. We would hire our own mining staff uh, and we would run the mine um, under our own banner. Uh, we made the decision here to go with a contract mining model. That is, we are going to hire a firm to manage and run our mining operations. And that's really a way to share risk between two different entities. The contractor takes some risk and NIOCorp takes some risk. So we're de-risking the project. It does uh, come with a little bit of premium and cost. We, we think it uh, ends up being a more operable uh, and, and a better operation at the end of the day. I think it's important to recognize the continued strong level of support we see in Southeast Nebraska for the project. You know, recently I had the opportunity to address the local school board down in Johnson County. And those folks are very uh, interested in our activities. They're very, they're very keen to plan and be prepared uh, for when this project becomes a reality and when our, when our financing is secured. I, I couldn't be happier uh, with the level of support that we continue to see there. Uh, people are interested, they, they call us, they contact us, they really want to see this thing go forward and they want to do anything they can to help us along the way.